Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to Conan Exiles. So, the last time we took a first look at the game and built some very basic shelters. But now, we've moved along the map a little bit and we can actually tackle a proper build. So, we're over on the right hand side here on the edge of the new biome. You can see here where we started off on the broken highway and finished up around about here. So I've moved a little further around, found a cool location with plenty of resources to build in and spent quite some time gathering resources. Not nearly enough apparently, but there we go. So we're going to start tackling a tower today, as you may have seen from the thumbnail. So one of the cool things about Conan Exiles, uh, on the building side at the very least, is we have these triangular pieces which allow us to do almost circular structures. Something we just can't tackle in Fallout. So we're going to take a look at something not completely original, but uh, very cool. Sort of simple uh, by the standards of Conan Exiles, but suitably challenging for an early build. So, in order to build something with a circle, this is what we've got to do. We start with a hexagon of triangles in the middle, and the square pieces coming off that, and then fill the gaps in with more triangles. And we're going to do another circle just to make this base a little bit bigger. So, it's been quite a uh, thought exercise doing this. When it comes to building a Fallout, I know how to think, I know how the game works, I know it inside out. With Conan, it's a little different, and it's uh, something I'm having to adapt to, which has been interesting. But here we go. That's the main foundation in place, so we're going to build up and out from that. We'll stick a door on and then get some walls in place. You can see from the outside, I mentioned last time, the, um, the writing there shows you which way around the pieces are actually facing. So we've got wooden supports on the inside and just plain wall on the outside. They do work either way, but we're going to have them the right way around for this. Or we're going to try to anyway. So on the ground level, it's not such a problem with this being on a PvE server here, but particularly on PvP. If you've got windows, people can sort of reach in and if you haven't locked things, help themselves to your stuff. So we're going to use the lowest level is going to have no windows, and we'll put the windows in a little further up. And technically, you can just climb up the outside of the building, but it looks the part, so it's not a bad habit to have. So stick the windows in there, pop the gaps up. You can see the game likes to snap. It's very, very aggressive with its snapping, which is a good thing because group select and that sort of thing that we use in Fallout is not a thing in Conan. But there we go. We have uh, the lowest level. I'm going to do this at double height, so two sections of wall high, because otherwise the ceilings feel very, very low. So, there we go. We've got a little uh, foundation so I can get in and out the door. And we're going to stick the ceiling on. So the technique here is to match the ceiling to the floor. So squares above squares and triangles above triangles. Certainly by far and away the easiest way of doing it anyway. Most effective, so there we go. Just drop those in. So I spent absolutely ages gathering tons and tons of materials for this and I built a fair few of the building pieces so we have to craft those separately first. But I very very rapidly ran out realised I hadn't even close to estimated how many I needed. I have no idea really, so we live and learn. There we go. We'll plug this up a level up until I run out of building pieces, like that. And we'll move on and create some more in a moment. So I'm going to run the staircase around the outside. You can do it on the inside, but obviously you wind up with less space that way. But uh, as you can see at the moment, the stairs do not want to line up with the edge of the wall. There's a bit of an angle between them, a gap there because I've made a slight error and put a square piece opposite the door where I should have put triangle ones. So we'll figure that out in a moment. Eventually. There we go, we'll take those out. Do you actually think about it may have been the wrong call? No, no, it was the right call. So we put a square one on the long edge for this. There we go, snap that on, and now it's snug with the wall. And clearly with that tiny little gap there is not the right size or shape for one of the wedge pieces, so we'll take this one out and put some triangles in. Quite the dramatic uh, dismantling animation there. As you can see, we can't just pick things up, or not with building pieces anyway, we can't pick them up. 
we have to destroy them and therefore lose most of the materials so it's one more reason why it takes so much I'm a little bit encumbered here but uh, we'll work around that so a few triangles to make things line up now we've got a landing so we'll turn around and plug in the gaps there we go and that finicky one wants to go in, there we go so there's one thing that can be a bit of an issue when you're uh, snapping pieces into place is that if you have too many options in a way for it to snap to, like this it'll snap anywhere, or try to snap rather, anywhere but where you want it so sometimes I have to move around and try and remove as many of those options from your field of view as possible and eventually it'll snap in, I'll show you in just a moment what I did to solve this problem but seeing as we're up here and we've got the pieces already in our inventory We'll just stick the walls on while we're here. I was also hoping it will provide a bit of a guide for where the uh, stairs are going to snap, but it doesn't really work along those lines. Still, as soon as we're here. And there we go. That's what happens if you're not careful enough. You wind up with wall pieces where you don't actually want them. Or you muck it up and they're facing the wrong way. You can see they don't sit very snugly there. They'll snap in, but we've got holes now. There we go, that's better. Yep, and unfortunately it's still not wanting to cooperate. So I'll drop down below and do it from underneath, because for some reason it works from there. But first... <laughs> now I can't snap into the top there and I haven't got a door piece, just a uh, door frame piece just yet, so... We'll leave the gap for the moment and come back to it. Get the ceiling in as well. Slight error there, but as I do want a triangle piece there anyway. There we go. We're building right at the edge of a cliff here. We have to uh, kind of jump off and climb back up again. But There we go. That's what we want. And this one works from the top just fine. So, that is the gist of how we're going to build the main body of the tower. It's a simple case of repeating that over a few more floors. And this is what we get. So we now have a uh, four or five storey, I suppose, tower, depending on your point of view. So it includes the roof. And I've decided to leave that gap in the middle of the floor because it looks rather cool. You can see all the way up the tower, or down the tower. Though I'm actually going to change my mind on that later, because it doesn't leave very much room inside, so once we start furnishing it's kind of hard to get around things. However, we have a nice view from the roof here. We need some fences on here. Later on, in the higher tiers of building materials, this is obviously just the most basic tier, um, you do actually get crenellations, so make it look even more like a castle, but that's not available just at the moment. I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not I'll want to build with those materials because with them being a higher level the raw material cost of the pieces is significantly higher and the amount of work you need to do to create them is much higher as well. So that's one advantage from using sandstone like this. So we'll slap some railings on here so we don't just fall through the floor. And repeat down here. There we go. Looks good. As I say, not really spacious enough inside, unfortunately, so I'll be undoing all that later, but it is what it is. I'll slap a couple of doors in. These you can actually pick up and put back in your inventory, which is kind of cool. And there we go. So, the staircase is looking rather unsupported and bare from the outside, so we need to do something about that. We'll follow the line of the wall round put a foundation in, and then we'll build some walls up there. So these walls only snap to existing building pieces, so we can't start from the ground. And there we go. As you can see, we've been right up against the rock face behind it. It's going to make things a little more complicated in a moment, so we'll take a closer look at that in a second as well. For now, snap some walls in. Oops, that one's the wrong way around. Just jump in and change that. There we go. Yeah, man. There we go. 
And I'll put it the right way around this time. There we go. In a moment, we'll fill those gaps in with uh, angled wall pieces, triangular wall pieces, which is very cool that we can do that. See what I mean about using a huge amount of materials? Give you some idea. I think the grand total was something in the region of 8,000 stone, something like that, to build this. Sort of harvested, you know, one or two units at a time, so. You know, with each swing of the pickaxe, so that's a lot of work. And I've trapped myself in here. There's a difference from Fallout as well. If you lock yourself in like this, fortunately I can climb out, but had I properly sealed myself in, I would have actually had to destroy a building piece to get back out again. Just something to bear in mind. I've also recently found out that you can, if you climb into somebody else's building sometimes, you can often not get back out again, which was uh, problematic. There we go. Progress is being made. I'm going to follow the staircase all the way around to the end. This is where it starts to get complicated because of the cliff face here. So, it will be a case of snapping some foundations in on a level with the top, because whilst they will clip straight through the surface of the world, the rock face in this case, on occasion, it can be a bit difficult. They'll only sink so far in. Well, that works. The plan I ended up going with, a bit further on from here, is that uh, I'll use the space under the stairs as cupboard space. You could actually take the internal walls out and just make more room in the main room, but I like the idea of cupboard space. And we've got a sandstorm sweeping in here, which will very rapidly kill me if I don't take shelter, so... A few minutes later we come back, and... Trying to figure out which way around to uh, place these was a little bit of a battle. It's kind of the opposite in a way while you're going around the outside. You've got the triangles on the short edges and the squares on the long one. So that you can turn the corner. And I've also made a small error that we'll come back and correct in a moment. Look at that. That kind of snapping just would not be possible in Fallout. Uh, the, the error, speaking of, as you can probably see, is I've put windows in the inner tower and now I'm wrapping them in outer walls with no windows in, which makes it kind of pointless. So what I'll do in a bit is come back and take out, whoops, got a wall the wrong way around. And this is where you want to be careful with it, because when I take this out, bang goes the piece above it as well. However, when you've got enough support in place, enough connecting pieces, they'll actually stay there. So what I'll do in a bit is finish this off and then come back around and swap some of those walls out for windows so that they line up and we get a bit more light coming in. Can't really see through them, but there is a little bit more daylight, which is the main idea. So, just figuring that out now, in fact. Okay, as you see, I've taken one of the wall pieces out and put a door in there. Sort of uh, testing the waters a little bit, because I wasn't entirely sure if the whole building was going to come down when I did that. Fortunately, it didn't. It just took that one section out. Presumably, as I say, because there's enough support there. So with this triangle foundation in there, we line up with the top of the stairs. So we'll uh, bring the walls up now. And I've mocked it up again. Apologies for the fact it's getting a bit dark. We'll uh, move on in just a moment. Unfortunately, as it's uh, non-modded, for varying reasons, including that the game being online uses Battle Eye, so... You can put mods in, but they're also kind of cheats, so playing online with them is probably not a good plan. There we go. So the staircase is now fully walled off, and we're going to make some changes to the inside. Didn't like the window right up against the stairs there. Unfortunately, the staircase is now blocking the placement of the new wall, so that'll have to come out in just a moment. Let's see if the opportunity's there. Let's put a floor in this little cupboard. Nope, still not playing ball. We'll get there in a minute. New game, new rules. So much to figure out. Swap those pieces over. You can only build things that are on your hot bar down at the bottom there. And there we go. So I want to close off the stairs there, just because it looks more complete. Shut the daylight out a little bit. There we go, I figured it out. Take the staircase out, put the wall in, and we'll replace the stairs in just a moment. 
So the idea here is that I want the doors to be separated, so the door to the staircase and the door to the cupboard, by two wall pieces, which is one flat section of wall. I'll take that window out. There you go. Did not fall down on me. Largely, as I say, because it's got enough support. So there we go. Got a nice little gap between the two doors. We'll put the floors in. I've put this floor that I'm standing on in just so that I can stand on it, but as you can see, it's the wrong piece because we're coming around the corner again. Needed to be a triangle, that one. Or three triangles to be exact, I think. One, two, three. There we go, and we can carry on again. As you can see the windows are letting a little bit of light in now. And there we go. Nice. Now we're up on the top floor here, so we've got the smallest amount of space under the stairs. So at the same time as I want to maximise it, I also want to close off the upper staircase. So we're going to use a ceiling piece and then snap a wall onto that so we can get underneath it. And you can see here why I did it two wall pieces high, because that gap is very, very small. So there we go. That's what it looks like. Now we're going to go around and try and match up these windows. So we've got one lining up here, there we go, and there's another one just around the corner, that's slightly more awkward. Pull that wall out, window in. A lot of trial and error, particularly because as I say I'm still figuring out the ins and outs of building in Conan. But I like it a lot, you can see we haven't got anything lining up there so that's not going to work. This one's fine though. all out. Just checking here that you can't peer in from the uh, cliff edge through the window. But you can't, so it's fine. I say you could climb up, but whatever. There we go. That's basically the main structure. Looking very uh, medieval in the jungle there, which is a bit nonsensical, but we like it. So, yeah, not the most complicated build in the world, but also not the simplest either, so it's cool. However, this entrance area is looking a little exposed. Just Anybody can just run up and go straight up the stairs. So, Although I'm not going to put a roof on it, so it won't actually keep them out. But it will look much better when we've added a little bit more on the outside here. What I was thinking here was that I wanted this back end to sort of curve around. As you can see, that triangle piece doesn't quite meet up with the wall, so I'm not going to be able to put a wall in that gap. So that will have to change in a moment. For now, we'll follow it around the outside. Getting rather close to the level of the ground here, so we've got a bit of grass clipping through, but it's not a problem. It would be if I was going to put a rug down, I think. It looks very ridiculous, but we can manage with it as is. So here, again, it's a case of sort of changing how you think. As it's... Uh, a little different to what I'm used to, so I'm going to hop up on the stairs in a minute so I can actually see what I'm doing a little better and figure the pattern out a bit more. So somewhere here we need an extra triangle piece, that's the one I think. No, that's where we need a square one because we're just around the corner here. There we go. And now it sort of follows around. Is that right? Not sure. No, I don't think it is. Pull those out again. Totally scratching my head whilst I was trying to figure this out. There we go. Square one there. Triangle's in the corner. That's the one. I wouldn't mind too much of those uh, pieces despawned a little bit faster. It is what it is. There we go. Let's get that last triangle in. And there we have it, our little sort of porch area. So, as I say, that's going to need to change. That wedge-shaped gap there is far too small to be of any use. Swap those foundations over. Pop that out. Pull this one out from beneath. Didn't actually have to do that, but it's much cooler when they match up, so. 
Drop that under there so everything actually looks supported. And there we go. So with this being over the cliff, I wanted to sort of be able to look out the windows. I'm actually going to use this as storage space. Uh, again, with it being PvE, it doesn't matter too much, but if it was PvP, it would probably not be the, the way to go, because access would be a little too easy to anything I have to store in there. There we go. Wall snapped in, and we have our little porch area. So I need some kind of ceiling on at least part of this. So we'll pull these little railings out. Drop some ceiling pieces on there. Bang, bang. I think we're going to put one or two more on here as well. There we go. Oh, I had thought about filling this entire area up with uh, ceiling pieces and making it another internal area, but I kind of like the fact it's open. So I'm going to stick with that. I don't need the extra security, and it looks cool, so... Time to add a few railings. And mock it up again. It takes a bit of practice getting the caution just right to uh, get everything to go where I want it to and not where I don't. There we go. Nice and easy. And I will put a few more around the edge of that, but that can wait. So, we're nearly there. This area is the uppermost internal floor, fourth floor. And it's going to become our living quarters, so we're going to take a look at decorating it as well. It's uh, a little bit different to Fallout, for example. It's rather cool. So I'm trying to figure out where exactly I want the bed here, which is opposite the space in between the two doors there, sort of facing it. So here we go, nice double bed. As you can see, we are not going to be left with very much room here. So this is where I made the decision to take that area out the middle. There we go. Much better. And here's a lesson Bethesda could really do with learning. The next time they put settlement building into a game, it'll sit right up against the wall with no collision issues. Which is absolutely fantastic. Look at that. That wasn't so difficult, was it? So I would like to have a fireplace in here, but that is uh, requiring a much higher level of character to uh, unlock that particular skill. So we'll use this cooking station for now. I'll stick that in between the two doors. It's the entrance on the left and the cupboard on the right. And there we go. And a few more furnishings. So some wardrobes. Those lined up nice and carefully. One. And though this one's over the window, which theoretically you could just reach through and uh, help yourself to the contents, but again, as I say, PVE, so it's not a problem. In this particular case, the appearance is far more important than uh, security. So there we go. What am I going to put down next? The Fireball Cauldron, which we use for alchemy, or the lowest level of crafting station for alchemy. It looks rather cool. We need a little bit of warmth in the space we're going to live in. So there we go. Now this is an artisan's workbench. It allows us to craft furniture. The stuff we've done so far you just do straight from your inventory menu. But there's a few bits of decoration and stuff we need this menu for. So that's what the bench is there for. Makes sense to have it in the room we're actually going to use it in. So you've got a few lighting options, some tables and chairs. If you've got silk in the light, you can do uh, cushions and tapestries. There's only one tapestry I can actually do without silk, which is not something I can get just now. But we've got a few uh, rug options as well. Unfortunately, the bed's kind of in the way here, so I can't put this particular tapestry behind it. I can, however, pick the bed up, so I'll do that off camera and move it out of the way. Now, we'll put these where we can. Try and get them roughly the same height. We'll put a rug down. Still a few clipping issues there. In the texture of the floor, but... On the other hand, it will place reasonably easy. Which is good. And a few more accent rugs. Guess nobody likes to get out of bed onto a cold stone floor. 
Drop a table in the middle and some chairs. You see on the front of these chairs you've got that little arrow pointing outward. There's quite a few objects that have that on there. It's not actually part of the item, it just indicates which way is the front. Not entirely sure why you need that on a chair, but uh, for some other things it's kind of helpful. Storage boxes in particular, because hinges can be hard to see sometimes, so telling which way around they go is a bit difficult. There we go, we'll drop those in. That one at the back near the bed's actually a little too close, but... There we have it! So let's have a look at the finished building. See those little huts around that I put in just to uh, set myself up while I was ho hunting for materials. So, looking very, very cool. Well, I think so, anyway. Nice, let's take a look around the inside. A couple of planters there, so we'll be growing a few uh, bits and pieces in those. And this will be the first of our crafting rooms. It's going to have all the blacksmith stuff in it. So we've got a furnace there. It's a little too close to the door. And a blacksmith's bench. This is our little cupboard. Only one chest in there for now, but let's start. Yeah, see I've closed up the gaps on the ceiling all the way down now. Let's take a look upstairs. So I've very much enjoyed doing this build. It's a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun with the game in general as well. However, oops, doors are the wrong way around. I'll have to change that in a bit. So this is our uh, tanning and armor type location. And a little bit of woodworking as general as well. So yes, I was just gonna say, doing these videos takes a lot of time. There's a huge amount of raw material gathering required to do any kind of significant building. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun, but that's a lot of hours of work as well, so it's not really very practical, so... I think as a video type content it's going to be relatively few and far between. I'll still do a few, but... Here we go, here's our bedroom. But uh, in the main, I think I will probably stream the game for a bit. So that will be uh, much easier to manage. Looking very homely. And we'll go on up to the roof, where I will eventually be putting a Wheel of Pain to convert captured NPCs into thralls. For now, there we have it. And the rain's cleared up, so we can actually enjoy the view for a minute. So, I do hope you enjoyed that one. I've had a lot of fun with it. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to support the channel a bit more directly, you can find a couple of options down in the description. For now, thank you very much. I will be speaking to you all very, very soon.